Hello everybody. Welcome to this week's story. Today's story is called Jam. Now bees love honey. At least most bees love honey. For some strange reason that nobody was quite sure about, Bellamy loved jam. His favourite was strawberry jam. He loved the stuff. He just couldn't get enough of it. He would deliberately fly into people's kitchens and sneak it off their toast. He loved jam. And the strangest of all, Bell and me only liked strawberry jam. Now, that wouldn't be a problem, except that jam makes bees very, very sticky. It gets into their wings and stops them from flying. It stops them from doing what they should be doing, which is collecting honey. Time and time again, the Queen had sat Bellamy down and explained to him that he shouldn't go anywhere near jam. If he kept going near things which he knew he shouldn't touch, then eventually he wouldn't be able to do the things that he should do. Now this is just like us. If we remain pure, then we will see God one day. If we don't remain pure, then we will never see God. So we must stay away from the things which stop us from being pure. Now Bellamy tried very hard. He went for three whole weeks without looking at any jam at all. He even flew past Lucy, who was eating a sticky jam trifle. He really was doing well. Then Lucy's granny, who lived at the bottom of Lucy's street, started making strawberry jam for the playgroup. And she made it every morning. And what was worse, she would always leave her toast to cool in the window. Every morning, Bellamy had to fly past on his way to collect pollen. He could smell the jam. He could see the jam. But he knew that if he went near it, it would stick to his wings. Every morning he flew past. Until that morning five days ago when he'd missed breakfast. Oh, the smell of the jam on the toast. He flew over and looked. He smelled it and then he climbed on the toast and started to nibble. Just then, Granny came to get her toast and jam. And there on the jam was this bee. She took her rolling pin and brought it down. Bang! But Benemy was too fast. He flew away. But not as fast as usual. Because he had jam on his wings. The next day, Benemy couldn't resist. Because now he had the taste for jam in his mouth. Now this happens to us too. Once we do something that makes us impure once, we find it hard not to do it again. It becomes a bad habit. So Ben and me again flew over to the jam and again he started to eat it. This time Granny kept up quietly and she lifted her rolling pin and bang! Again, Ben and me was too fast for her, but only just. All that jam on his wings was slowing him down. The jam was beginning to stop him doing what he should be doing. Things that make us impure stop us serving God and stops us from seeing God. Sure enough, the next morning, Bellamy was back to the jam again, but this time when Granny lifted up her rolling pin, Bellamy could hardly move. He managed to take off, but hadn't got very far before he heard BANG! He thought his head had exploded. He became very dizzy and he lost control. He could feel himself falling, falling and then nothing. Bellamy thought he was dead. Messing about with things that stop us being pure 
can get us into lots of trouble and problems. Now Bellamy lay on the ground all yesterday. He wasn't moving. His eyes were closed. And that's where Betsy found him this morning, unconscious on the ground. I don't know what will happen to him. Now we must be pure in heart and not fill our heart with bad things. The pure in heart will see God. Now next week I will tell you what happens to Bellamy. So keep that thought. It must be pure. And that leads us on to today's, today's lesson, which is, in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, let me read this from the Bible. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. And he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from the same city where Andrew and Peter came from. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, the one that Moses spoke about and the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, But can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said of him, Look, this Israelite is pure in heart. In him there's nothing like guile or deceit or anything bad. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were still under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael said to him, You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Now you will see greater things than these. And most assuredly I say to you that from today you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon my head. What a fantastic story that was of Jesus speaking to Nathaniel because he saw this wonderful purity in Daniel's heart and in his spirit. Now Nathaniel was one of the first disciples that Jesus chose. And of course at first, as we just read, he didn't really believe who Jesus was because he said, does anything good come out of Nazareth? But then when he met him, everything changed. As soon as Nathaniel saw Jesus, he changed his mind. And there was something about him that meant he could recognise God. Jesus knew what it was and said to him, Here is an Israelite with no guile, no deceit, no bad thing in him. Now guile and deceit are, as we know, are bad things that we can have in us. And Jesus was telling people that Nathaniel had no bad things in him. He was pure in heart and pure in spirit. And because of that, he could see God. He knew that Jesus was God. So, if we want to be able to see God, we need to be pure in heart and pure in spirit. So, what do you think the word pure means? What other words could we use for the word pure? Well, I've written three down here and see if you agree with me that these also mean pure. The first one is holy. The second one could be clear, which means there's nothing dirty in him. It's all clear inside. And of course, the other one, which is the main one, I think, is clean. So we need to be clean, clear, and holy to be pure in heart. So again, let me ask you if can anybody see God? I think they can, but they have to be pure in heart. But some people, of course, may never see God 
And this is really, really sad, but it's also true. There may be a million different reasons why they don't see God. Maybe they don't believe in God, or they're too busy doing bad things which they enjoy, or maybe they just don't want to be pure. But again, it all comes down to one word, and we don't see God because of this word. Sin. So, this person who has sin can't see anything to do with God. And the sin is the, the rubbish that we have in us, it's the, the junk, it's the garbage, it's the things that messes us up inside. It's, it stops us doing things that God wants us to do, it stops us seeing things that God wants us to see. And it makes us a sort of person whereby people say, let's have no dealings with that person because of all this in their heart. We can forgive them, but let's not have any dealings with them. And it's really sad that there are people like that. But the thing that stops that is becoming clear, becoming holy, and becoming, if I can get the word, clean. If we're those things, then we will be able to see God. Blessed are those who are pure in spirit, for they will see God. So let us keep thinking about things of what we can do to become pure so that we can see God. It's being kind, it's doing the right thing, it's, it's knowing and understanding people like the disciple Nathaniel who recognised God straight away through Jesus because he was pure. You know, he didn't have the sin in his life that most people have. It's, he got rid of the rubbish and the, and the junk and the garbage and the things that didn't mean anything to him. So it's quite interesting when we start learning and doing and understanding things that... Um, that we don't want to do anymore, like the temptation of the jam on the toast for Bellamy. If we continue to fly past and not think of how bad it is for us, then we will do well. So let me leave you with this this week then. Try and get rid of the things that you have in your lives that you know that won't please God. Try and get rid of those. And then God will fill you with the things that he wants you to have. So you won't feel empty. You won't feel, oh, what can I do? I'm not being able to do that anymore. So you can do something else that's, that's pleasing to God. And eventually you'll become like Nathaniel and see him. See Jesus. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.